Let's start with fingering. Um, if you have a short reel, let's say a couple of beats, you can use first and third fingers as it creates good space between notes, between fingers, to feel vibration in your forearm. Um, and I mean, we're gonna talk about this in a second, I'll show you. Again, if the tendons and muscles of your thumb are not trained well enough, basically if the thumb is not independent yet, then you might find second, third fingers pattern more comfortable. If you have a long cadential trill, which is the topic of our video today, the best choice would be a one, three, two, three pattern. Uh, because if you use um, first and third fingers, after some time, the third finger would lose its strength, especially if you need to play in you know, all this bright, electric, loud, uh, long trill. Um, and you know, if you have long palm and long fingers like mine, welcome to my world, it feels like I uh, basically don't have enough space for, for my third finger muscle to fully work. So it's just gonna, uh, it cannot breathe anyways. So when I have one, three, two, three, there is a space for breathing. So it's gonna work for a long term. Um, again, those who don't know how to control finger muscle through intonation might find this finger pattern a bit confusing um, because I was taught about this when I was very, very young and I tried it where I had no idea about intonation and I found it much more difficult to play than just, you know, a stable one, three pattern of fingers. So in other words, it's working only when you use good intonation. Keep that in mind. Also keep in mind that pressing keys on the edge is always much lighter and easier than playing in the middle of keys. So if you have this opportunity playing trills on white keys or black keys only, use it. Okay, so we're gonna play here. It is important to organize trills very clear in order to make phrasing that will let hands breathe while playing and not suffocate and get all tied up. So you see here is how it looks like basically in your mind and those learn a phrasing. I'm gonna talk about it in a couple of minutes. Now later when hand muscles we already memorize the pattern of breathing if you want, you can easily let go of counting and just enjoy your free electric trill. So not playing this way. Which is also I would say nice play like this but for example this way you see kind of a little bit more free but still your muscles inside breathing so you understand but if you start this way from the beginning free way your hand will get stiff almost right away, especially when you play in your both hands and somehow feel that right hand is not fast enough and you try to kind of even them and speed up. So it's all get very confusing and tense. Always organize and know, have clear image how trills um, is structured, okay? Also guys, um, if you are a teacher or maybe a student, don't bother if you play, for example, trill and your pinkies start curving like this. Because, uh, I don't know what is it, but that not always a sign that you're doing something wrong. Because if I play, I don't know, sometimes um, when I play the trill, I feel my pinky can be up, can be like this. I mean, not, I'm not like this, <laughs> of course. Something like this, could be like this. Sometimes it could be like this. But that doesn't show that your hand is tense or something. It's just naturally how fingers start curving when I do some natural movements. So don't pay attention to this. It is important to imagine notes to better feel sounds and fingertips to better control your fingers. Also, when you want to match notes in both hands, 
you know, without trying to catch left hand with your right hand trio and get tied up even more, which I just explained uh, before, you definitely need to imagine both hands together, including the exit, of course. So use a uh, timbre of vocal voice if you want, you know, or violins, or even just sound texture. And make movement pattern this way. So basically, if I would show you through singing, you imagine a uh, right hand. This kind of very flat, you know, infinity sign. And the left hand, of course, left, right, left, right. So when you imagine together, again, if you can imagine both notes right away, start sequentially, speeding up till you get it all together. If you can, good. So you imagine basically left, left, right, left, right. Okay, I'll just show you. So when you convey this pattern through wrist movements, it looks exactly this way. I'll show you one of them. I don't know why I took, why I took this pattern, but I think it's just the first thing that came to my mind. It's the most uh, common, I think, <laughs> for, for cadences. And over here, mm, let me think. Okay, over here on the last note you go like this. Okay, I don't know why I'm explaining this, I mean, you probably know it. Um, so, it's important to make this wrist movements, because later, in the fast tempo, it will create the forearm vibration over here. You know, people might say, you know, it feels like rotation. I might say it feels like rotation to me, but I never use rotation because it's not connected to music. I don't know how to measure notes in rotation. I'm sorry. And if you do this, it gives the same vibration as a simple rotation would probably give you as well. So, uh, in other words, wrist movement is an engine for trilling. <laughs> so without this initial wrist movement in fast tempo, your forearm will get stiff. Remember. I would also want uh, to add here about imagination. So I would really suggest you to imagine dynamics as well, because even if you have piano, let's say, in both hands, if both hands are imagined on the same level of dynamics, you know, with the same distance, there is no balance, there is no voicing, then you might end up with something like this. And then you will try to play even, you know, lar um, louder with your right hand that will create more tension to your trill, so forget about this. Start with clearing up exactly what do you want. And if you want your right hand be louder, uh, then take, even if you need five minutes for this, but take those five minutes. Don't just try to play it without hand. Take those five minutes away from the piano and imagine both hands where uh, you would imagine that you are closer to your right hand. So your right hand is in front of you. So that's why even though it's piano, with the same shape of the sound in your mind, it's more clear. It's, I, I wouldn't even say clear, it's uh, clear and also more rich. So it would look this way. <laughs> you might also find, oh, while practicing, um, that your D would kind of start disappearing, so something like this would sound. So D almost never uh, in the picture. So again, don't just repeat it hundreds of times trying to make it. Go to your imagination and find out that actually D in your imagination also started fainting. That's why you lost probably your D. So correct it. Bring it to the first plan again, okay? Voila! <laughs> also another very good exercise, if you play, for example, soft 
the trails and you work and work with them and at some point you <coughs> your voice your tone completely starts fainting away so uh you know what just uh, go opposite play slow and fast <laughs> and fast tempo. Is it going to be okay? <laughs> it is important to play with intonation and weight, to transfer free energy while playing and later being able to breathe in the energy of your muscles while making phrasing. Uh, okay, so this is what it looks like uh, without any intonation. And you, as you can see, I can still talk while playing because maybe when I'm rushing something, I'm not singing. And this is with intonation and weight. helps actually not to stuck with your fingers so what might happen is that on the long term again you might play everything is good and then you know yes that finger just stuck you know it's not lifting uh, up anymore so um, control muscles with internal singing remember uh, that resistance in between notes that affect finger tendons affect finger muscles so you know when you intonate with resistance this resistance activates and control our fingers so if i would sing actually fast how it looks like that I'm not really, you know, it's just a feeling, but this feeling uh, that is left in the fast tempo will still control your finger. So, okay, so you see, it works. Now, for more crispy, articulate tone, you can use the GR intonation. So as you remember, um, I made this articulation video in the past. Okay, not important, forget. Uh, so speeding up extremely. And by the way, the same way I would intonate my left hand. But connecting notes will create this crispy sound. So let's say this is our regatta, you see? Not the best choice, especially if you want to play in a fast tempo of those electric strings. So, and this is with uh, Ligiera. Imagination, wrist movements, intonation, weight articulations, start applying phrasing. So let's go. Play by uh, motifs or motifs <laughs> first. Um, small slurs that are written on the screen. So um, everything we express through intonation, drop the energy in the beginning of the block, bring everything to the last interval. And you can even slow down and stop after every interval, after every month. and play 
play by sentences, but I didn't really complicate it that way. So motifs, I think, and phrases are quite enough. And when you're ready um, in slow tempo, <laughs> basically kind of like this slow tempo, right? Then after that starts speeding up. So it is important to feel pulse before and while playing because it helps to feel phrasing better as well as to better organize muscles breathing. Um, well, basically that's what you do. Uh, as you can see, those arrows, gray arrows down. So this is our pause. So we're gonna proceed by every quaver, so every eighth note. So, so feel it to give us some emotional meaning. Let's say like this. Play with full phrasing. while playing three or something like this. You start. Oh, that sounds, that feels comfortable. Let's go faster. Oh, that's still okay. Let's go faster. Let's go faster. Okay, I can't play anymore. Oh, I can't play fast trills. All right, so don't disappoint yourself this by this way of practice. Um, and basically, the more time you spend to practice this way, the faster, easier, and longer you could play the trills. So... <laughs> Um, that's about it, and see you soon. Bye.